I'm Nick Snow, watching Government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. It was easy to wonder if anything new could be said at the Center for Strategic and International Studies June 9th forum about possible impacts of lifting the ban on U.S. crude oil exports. Since it was a room full of experts in Washington, the answer quickly became apparent. The discussion centered on a report which IHS Energy issued in late May. Its authors frankly admitted they'd reached conclusions similar to those in two other groups' earlier studies. Lifting the ban would increase U.S. crude production by 3 million barrels a day and add nearly $750 billion of investments. The increased supplies would lower global oil and domestic gasoline prices. At its peak, higher domestic production would create 1 million jobs and increase gross domestic product by $135 billion, and average income per household by $391. We're talking about an artifact of history that's still in place, IHS Vice Chairman Daniel Jurgen observed. What we're looking at is an archaic ban that's left over from an era that's long gone. Constraints on free trade arising from the near-total export ban leaves U.S. producers with very deep discounts for their light, sweet crude, which could eventually affect activity, warned Kurt Barrow, IHS's downstream and oil markets vice president and one of the report's authors. It's not a good fit with the refining system we have, he said. We're going to continue importing crude, but it will be the heavier, lower-cost sour grades for which our refining system is configured. There are economic gains in the future, but it's important to preserve the economic gains we've already achieved, said Kevin Book, who leads the research team at Clearview Energy Partners, LLC, a Washington consulting firm. It's impossible to ignore benefits to refineries of low gas prices, as well as deep discounts for domestic light crude. Referring to the report's findings, Frank A. Verastro, a CSIS senior vice president who holds the James E. Schlesinger Chair for Energy and Geopolitics there, said, This is the future as it could be, not necessarily as it will be we're actually in a very new place. Jurgen said it was striking how stable global crude prices had been the last three years. We're used to reality not keeping up with expectations, he added. In this case, expectations aren't keeping up with reality. Consequently, it could take time for policymakers and the public to respond to this dramatically changed U.S. oil and gas outlook, the panelists agreed. We started this discussion a year ago, Verastro said. I think the administration is balancing all the benefits. People will become more comfortable with the new supply reality. We haven't even talked about the climate issue, particularly if fossil fuel use is perpetuated. Things change, said Jurgen. It takes time for thinking to catch up with the changes. It takes even longer for policies. That's watching government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.